All right. So your exam on Thursday, um, I've given you this list of basically well, 28 different topics or 28 different items. And I've given you a description of your exam. One thing that I want you to know is that your exam will have a total of 110 possible points and it will be graded out of 100. So what that means is that there's basically 10 bonus points built in. Um, you're definitely gonna need to know the structure of your proteinogenic amino acids. You're also going to need to know how those amino acids change based on the pH. So like I've stressed multiple times, I'm going to show you those amino acids in their fully protonated form. So I like to draw them at a pH of one, but on this exam, I'll give you a structure, I'll give you the pKa values, and I'll say, you know, this could be a good multiple choice sort of question. Given this structure, what is the pH in which this, this molecule exists? Um, so that's, that's absolutely important because as we were talking today, tertiary structure of proteins, quaternary structure of proteins is all about how those different R groups interact with one another. So that's a very important part of this class. Then, you know, there's, there's a good bit of kind of uh, background material that we, we discussed. And, you know, I would definitely look at my PowerPoints, differentiate between prokaryote and a eukaryote. What are the, the biggest differences? Um, then what are some of the more subtle differences? Looking at the structure of a prokaryotic cell, how does that differ from a eukaryotic cell? Um, then we also looked at plant cells versus animal cells. How do those differ, differ from one another? Um, are there organelles within a plant cell that are not in an animal cell? Um, then looking at something like delta G, what information does that give you? Um, is there a way that you can, what can you immediately know about a reaction based on a delta G value if it's positive or it's, if it's negative? Then how can you relate your KEQ value to a delta G? Um, then getting into different types of interactions. So what are our different types of non-covalent interactions? So a hydrogen bond is a non-covalent interaction. What about your uh, ionic interactions or, electro or yeah, electrostatic interactions? Um, those are all things that I, I think it's very important to, to have a good understanding of because we're going to be applying that or we're primarily going to be applying that to protein structure. So if you can understand a type of interaction, hydrogen bond interaction, um, then you have insight into, okay, well, this amino acid loves hydrogen bonding. What happens if we were to mutate that protein so that amino acid was not one that liked hydrogen bonding, but instead was something that formed ionic interactions? Is that going to change the activity of that protein? That's basically why it's important to understand your amino acids and understand different types of interactions. Um, then some of these things are just kind of a little bit of memorization almost. Like we talked about structures of sugars. We talked about cyclic forms of structures. You know, the glucose is the first structure that I, I think is, is worth memorizing, learning. And my kind of key for memorizing D-glucose in its linear form is it is right, left, right. Then when it's in its cyclic form, down, up, down. So right, left, right, right translates to down, up, down. Um, then understanding mutarotation. What is mutarotation? That's an alpha sugar versus a beta sugar. Uh, that has to do with that new chiral center. Um, then the one thing that's on here that I'm gonna go ahead and X out is basics of protein purification. I'm gonna hold that off until um, the next exam, because we, we only got into secondary structure of protein. So we'll address that later on. Basics of protein structure. I'm going to X this out. Um, straight through. But other than that, I think that these are really some of the high points that I want you to be familiar with. And if you, if these are all things that you've got 
or if these 28 items are something that you have kind of commentary on, I think you're going to be in good position on this exam. If you have questions about any of this, please email me and we can set up a time to meet uh, through Zoom or in person before our exam on, on Thursday the 29th. But until then, I hope you have a good day and good luck studying. Have a good one.